Hi, everybody. Hannah Storm along with Isaiah Thomas and Peter Vesey. promise we will hear from them in just a few moments. But first, our doubleheader game in most parts of the country is Utah at San Antonio. A Jazz win gives them home court advantage throughout the playoffs. The Spurs could earn home court advantage throughout, but they would have to win today, Tuesday at Portland, and Wednesday at Golden State. The Spurs have added some veteran players with good championship experience, like Mario Ellie and Steve Kerr. Peter spoke with Kerr, the former Bull, who won three titles in Chicago. Steve Kerr! That was tough to leave. In fact, my family stayed there for the first couple of months of the season, and uh, it was tough trying to get my wife to, to come down here. She she didn't want to leave, and, and, and neither did I at first. I mean, Chicago was, was our home for five years, and we loved it there. Do you talk to any of the leftover guys? You know, I haven't talked to any of them this season. It's been such a crazy season. Um, it has we, nothing to do with them losing all the time. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to disassociate yourself with the Bulls? I told them, you know, I'm trying to, to find them and watch them on TV, but you can't find them anywhere these days. <laughs> You guys don't cover them anymore. What's the deal? I played against them, and it's been going back for years about these guys being soft. And now that I'm on the team, it pisses me off. Pisses me off. Pisses me At the off. time, he was talking about David Robinson and Duncan not having the desire. Right. Did that need to be said? Yeah, sure. I, I love having a guy like Mario on a team to shake things up. You know, the Spurs have, for years, have been known as a team of nice guys and, and, and maybe soft or whatever. And to have a guy like Mario come in and kind of shake things up and uh, say some things that might, you know, anger some people. I think it's good for a team that you need stuff like that. I think Mario Eli has been really important for this team because he gave a, a, a kind of a toughness to the team and a, a, a strong backcourt presence. And he's also a guy who's hit some big shots. I think Tim Duncan's emergence has been kind of overlooked. I mean, people take him for granted, but he is amazing. And he's much more competitive than people realize. I mean, he's, he loves to play the game and loves to win. And to me, you know, having experienced uh, playing with the Bulls and winning titles, you need your stars to, to have that attitude to, to really want to win. And I think Tim is that guy. David Robinson says this is still his team, is it? David, for us, you know, has turned into the the defender and the shot blocker. And there are nights when he's gonna score big for us, but Tim's the main offensive weapon, so there's no reason why they can't share the team. And uh, It's interesting that everybody wants to say, whose team is it? Is it David's team or is it Tim's team? And since they don't make any issue out of it, people are trying to figure it all out. Meanwhile, people are saying, well, Shaq and Kobe can't get along, you know, and whose team? This is great, we got an ideal situation. We got two guys who, who are just playing hard and getting along great together. So what's the fuss? I don't, I don't guess. Kerr will shoot a two. Here's Kerr breaking down the defense. In the lane for the little runner. Bricks it badly. It's been a tough year for me. I haven't, I haven't played well. And uh, in fact, I, I, I assume this is the first time NBC has ever interviewed a guy averaging four points a game. If, am I correct? Um, I didn't want to get into that. <laughs> okay. But uh, now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's been a tough season for me personally. I haven't played well. It's an adjustment for for all of us to leave the triangle offense and go to a more traditional style offense. Um, I was there for five years. I got very comfortable in that offense. And it's so different. It's so unique from what everyone else is running. And maybe you get institutionalized or something. You get used to, to the way things are run. So I'm kind of looking at the playoffs as a chance to redeem myself and, and uh, you know, show that, that uh, they didn't bring me down here uh, in vain. Steve, do you think about that series-winning shot of yours? Uh, forget about thinking about it. No. Forget about thinking about it. Do you, you want to see let's the tape do it over. already queued up. <laughs> <laughs> Six seconds. Five. Michael in traffic to Kerr. Fifteen-footer. Yeah. Kerr! Kerr the jumper. I was put in a position that every kid in his driveway dreams about, and uh, I'm glad I went in. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this interview with you right now. That's right. I mean, you're certainly not here because of my performance this year, are you? <laughs>
<laughs> he's a great guy. He's so down to earth. And this is a guy who truly cannot believe that he's still playing in this league, that he's had the kind of career he has had, much less win several titles. Yeah, Hannah, not only every kid dreams about making that shot, my kid Joshua, who's 10 years old, dreams <laughs> about making that shot. Whenever we play basketball, we call it the Steve Kerr. I'll penetrate, dish out, he shoots to Steve Kerr. <laughs> Does he make it? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Give him any rings? <laughs> no, nah, he had to earn those. He's got to <laughs> earn those. You know, Steve absolutely takes himself too seriously, as we can all see. But the truth of the matter is, he does not watch the game-winning shot, the series-winning shot, and he does not wear his rings. He keeps them up on a shelf. Every once in a while, he takes them down. He says, they're big rocks. He says, the last thing I want to do is look like Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> He'll wear them when he's done. <laughs> he's full of one-liners, but uh, let's hope he has the last word come playoff time, because they are going to need him to regain his shot from the outside. The Jazz and the Spurs coming up right after the Knicks and the Pacers. Some of you will see the Lakers and Sonics from Seattle. And when we return, we'll talk about those two teams, L.A. and Seattle. It's been a disappointing season for both. First, a message from Prudential and a word from the NBA.